The stock market is up again massively today. S&P up 1.7%. QQQ tech stocks up 2%. All individual stocks are rebounding massively from that huge crash we saw on Monday. It's like the crash never happened. And of course, Wall Street actually bought the dip on that Monday. So crazy stuff to break down in this video. We'll go through why exactly it's happening. A lot of YouTubers don't talk about the actual facts here. So we'll go through what's going on with Japan to make all this happen, what's going on with institutional investors as well, should you buy the dip right now at current prices, we'll go through all of that in this video. So again, I see people talk about the stock market rebounding, I've watched other YouTubers, other people on X or Twitter, they say the stock market is up, great, let's buy the dip, but why is it happening? Let's understand the actual facts here, which apparently a lot of people just don't care about. This is very important. So the Bank of Japan folded already, what does that mean? So. Of course, again, if you guys need some backstory, watch my previous video. I'll link it down below on the Japanese carry trade. In essence, what was happening for the past decade was that the Japanese interest rates are so low that investors decided to, you know, borrow yen for very cheap interest rates. It practically costs nothing to borrow that money. They would reinvest that money into other higher yielding assets like U.S. Treasuries that, you know, yield them 5% plus. They're making a ton of money. And by the time they paid back their loan and gave back the yen they borrowed, they made so much more money. Now, what's happening in the Japanese economy is that the yen currency is being devalued so much that over time there's inflation their currency is less powerful which is definitely not good for you know buying imports J japan needs to import a lot of their goods they're not a you know naturally rich resource country so they have to import a lot a lower value of the yen makes it more difficult and more expensive to get those imports definitely not good whatsoever so the japanese bank decided to finally raise interest rates to make their currency a bit more valuable. What happened there is that all these people that were borrowing yen at low interest rates, when they saw the Japanese interest rate went up just a little bit, they freaked out. They were like, wait a second, we can't afford this now because we were so over leveraged. We have to close our loans, liquidate our assets, sell US stocks, sell all the higher yielding assets we had and buy back the yen. But then that caused the entire market to collapse because everyone was liquidating their assets. And the Bank of Japan was like, wait a second, we can't do this. So no, we're not gonna raise rates anymore and we may actually decrease rates again so here's what the bank of japan did last night so the yen actually dropped one percent to 145 bank of japan won't raise rates when market is unstable so they raised rates by 25 basis points and that alone crashed the market and now they're saying we're not going to raise rates anymore because the market is unstable so when do you raise rates that's an interesting question must maintain current degree of easing for time being so to current degree of easing now not tightening which would be raising rates easing interesting stuff market moves are extremely volatile watching impact they already saw the impact of course that's why they made this statement right see no big change to japan u.s economic fundamentals interesting markets reaction to single piece of u.s data appears to be too big and policy path will obviously change if market volatility view on risks change here. So the Bank of Japan pretty much just said, you know what, we're not going to raise rates at least anymore in the short term because of the huge negative reaction that, you know, it, it caused across the entire world and across the entire stock market. And for now, stocks love that in the United States, especially because they were like, OK, you know what, there's going to be less liquidation. You could still borrow money cheaply in Japan now without fears of the interest rate rising. And you could buy those higher yielding assets like U.S. Treasuries or maybe stocks, for example. And you could keep on going. That's it. So to me, this seems to be just delaying the inevitable for the Japanese economy. And then, of course, for the entire world as well, a bigger stock market crash could eventually happen, but at least as of now, a big stock market crash, at least in terms of the reverse carry trade here with Japan, is kind of canceled for now, which again, in the short term, is really good for stocks. And that's partly why, mostly why stocks are up so massively today. And some more on this here, you could see the chart of USD to Japanese yen, of course, over time, the value of the yen has been going down and down because interest rates in Japan have been so low uh, they've been doing this carry trade for so many years now 
Finally, again, we saw some type of decline, some type of increase in value of the yen uh, compared to USD, the US dollar, which was causing some, of course, huge market instability, the reverse carry trade, people were liquidating their positions, etc. And then, of course, last night here, we had this huge green candle where the yen was back to being devalued against the US dollar, and we're pretty much back to normal, at least for now. So I don't think this issue is completely done here. Again, according to most people, this seems to be just delaying the inevitable, where eventually the Japanese economy, if they don't want to hyperinflate their currency, like they have to increase interest rates at some point eventually, but at least as of now, that's not going to happen. So of course, that's one side to why stocks are back up today from Monday's crash. The other side as well is just the simple fact that institutions institutional investors, Wall Street, big money, bought the dip and retail traders sold aggressively, which is interesting as well. Behind Monday's trillion dollar sell off, institutional investors were buying the dip. Hedge funds snapped up US stocks at the fastest pace since March. Institutions bought $14 billion in shares during the 3% S&P 500 drop while retail was locked out of trading platforms. So a lot of the top brokerages, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, all their sites and services were down. Robinhood was actually working, which is interesting because a lot of people hate on Robinhood, but they were fine the whole day. So interesting point there. But regardless, there's a couple of key points to take from this here. One, institutional investors must have potentially known that the Bank of Japan was going to reverse course and see the market instability and say, wait, we can't raise rates anymore because it's affecting the entire world stock market. We can't do that. They may have known that. They bought the dip. They said, look, this is going to be short lived. And I guess they were right. Now, what's interesting, again, not to hate on other YouTubers, but I find it so interesting where people saw this and they said, look, this is exactly what always happens. Retail investors are always scared and big money always buys in when there's fear. But I saw the exact same thing from the same YouTubers previous months, previous weeks ago. I've been you know, in the stock market for several years now. I've seen the exact opposite. I saw yesterday as well, people saying no, retail investors always buy the dip and smart money was selling. Smart money were the ones that were getting out because they knew that there was gonna be a bigger crash in the market. The same people say the exact opposite thing. So the point is here is that I'm not claiming to be a stock market wizard, of course, but I feel like people act like they know exactly what's happening. We're in such a complex market that it's so hard to know if the right thing is to buy the dip or to sell the dip. Now, usually if you're a long-term investor, it's always good to buy the dip because any dip is a great opportunity to add stocks at cheaper prices. And for the long run, as long as you're buying the you know, S&P 500, as long as you're buying good, stable, mature companies, then you're going to make a lot of money in the market buying the dip. That is very true. But for shorter term and medium term traders, it's not always good to buy the dip here. And there have been times where retail bought the dip at all time highs and it turned out that that dip was going to be even bigger. A bigger crash was on the horizon and a lot of people thought that was now and it still is possible that right now buying the dip maybe isn't the best strategy because there still could be a bigger correction or even a recession in the market. So I just want you guys to be you know, wary of when people say now is the absolute best time to buy the dip. Now is the best time to sell etc. Again, as I said, long term, if you're a bull, if you have uh, several years, decades to, you know, have your stocks, have your money in the market, buying the dip is always a great strategy. But if you want to really time your trades and make as much money as possible, you have to really do a lot of research to see, okay, what is happening in the economy right now, this Bank of Japan news is good short term for stocks, but longer term, Japanese economy, the, Jap the Bank of Japan will eventually have to raise rates. And we saw what happens when they raise rates, the stock market crashes. So that's going to happen at some point. And you're going to have to probably know to sell your stocks or maybe sell before that happens or anticipate that move or maybe sell that day, the morning of. Um, you have to really watch out what's happening here. Now, of course, the U.S. economy is going through its own issues as well. We have jobless claims up. We have inflation lower than expected, which is good, but that also means the economy potentially is slowing. We're in a deflationary period. That could also cause a recession as well outside of what's happening in Japan. So a lot of factors here. I'm gonna try to break it all down for you guys in future videos. Of course, this video, I feel like I did a pretty decent job going through what's happening here, but it's a complex market. 
be wary about what you do and who you listen to. But again, as I said, long term, I am bullish long term. I believe despite what happens, even if we go into a deeper recession in the United States economy or the world economy, who knows? buying dips in good stocks, whether it's the market, of course, or individual stocks that have great fundamentals, great growth rates, great you know future prospects, et cetera, is always a good play. So again, just to look at the wider market right now, despite all these fears, we are still on a massive uptrend. We got close to the 200 day moving average and we bounced right up here, right above it pretty much. So again, right now we're not out of the clear. We are down below our 50 day and 20 day moving averages, which short term is a bearish sign technically, but long term we're still looking good. So I'll be sure to update you guys on further moves in the market, what is happening here. There's still a lot of volatility to come. The VIX is down massively, which is the volatility index of the market, but I could easily see that, you know, going right back up once we get inflation numbers next week more jobless claims tomorrow on Thursday and much more. So a lot happening here. Sorry for ranting in this video, but there just seems to be a lot of misinformation, a lot of people acting like they know what's happening. When in reality, this is a complex market. And in my opinion, we could really rock it until the end of the year, or we could have a decent crash. I don't think the economy is going to completely crash, but we could easily see some decent lows here, a decent correction in the market if uh, a couple certain factors do pan out. So just, you know, be understanding that anything is possible in this super volatile market. I'll be sure to update you guys and give you guys all the info as it all releases on the channel. So be sure to subscribe for all that info and more stock market analysis videos like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.